Hello, I'm Camilia and this is Kini News. Kairi has given some advice to PN lawmakers about engaging with Anwar in Parliament. This came following the exchange between Anwar and Razi Jidin in Parliament last week. Former AMNO leader Kairi Jamaluddin has advised Perikatan national lawmakers to be careful when engaging with Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim in Parliament. In the latest episode of his Keluar Skejap podcast, Kairi said this is because Anwar is unlike his predecessors and is not a statesman in parliament. Satu lagi perkara mungkin uh, unsolicited uh, nasihat yang tidak diminta uh, untuk Perikatan Nasional. Uh, PM Perdana Menteri kali ini adalah lain daripada Perdana Menteri sebelum ni. Uh, kalau Perdana Menteri sebelum ni dia tak akan engage dalam uh, dalam pertikaman lidah macam ni. They will take a more statesman-like approach to uh, parliamentary affairs. Uh, dan saya pernah tengok Perdana Menteri daripada Mahathir, Pak Allah, uh, Najib, Mahyuddin, uh, Ismail Sabri. Uh, they they don't do what PMX does. Uh, it's a good, uh, it can be a good or bad thing, that's up to you. Uh, tapi PMX dia memang uh, antara Prime Minister yang suka provoke balik suka yeah, combative uh, combative i mean true true to his uh, street fighter punya background lah kairi said this while commenting on the walkout staged by pn mps from the dewan rakyat last week during anwar's winding up speech on the 12th malaysia plan midterm review this was after anwar took a swipe at pn's putrajaya mp radzi jidin for laughing when he was explaining the issue of the discharge not amounting to an acquittal granted to deputy prime minister ahmad zahid hamidi kairi said radzi fell into anwar's trap after he singled him out during the parliamentary session he added that a serious discussion like that should have been more civilized but you can't blame either side as there was provocation from both sides he added that it was unfortunate it had to happen like that. Commenting on the DNAA, Kairi said the issue is now in the court of public opinion as most relevant parties, including Anwar, have commented on it. LFL has called on Pakatan Harapan and the government to seek a pardon for preacher Wanji Wan Husin, who was imprisoned for sedition. Lawyers for Liberty has hit out at the nine-month imprisonment of preacher Wanji Wan Husin over a 2014 sedition case linked to the Selangor Sultan. In a statement today, LFL Executive Director Zaid Malik said it is the moral duty of the government to ensure that Wanji does not continue to languish in prison for the charge. He said it is appalling and unacceptable that Wanji has now fallen victim to the Repressive Sedition Act and adding salt to the wound is that his imprisonment is under a Harapan-led government, which had previously championed for the abolition of the act. Zaid added that it is the duty of Pakatan Harapan, which promised to repeal the act, to ensure that Wanji does not continue to endure imprisonment under this draconian law. He said the Selangor government, which is led by Harapan and has a Menteri Basar from PKR, must do the right thing and advise the state ruler to pardon Wanji under Article 42 of the Federal Constitution. Zaid also urged Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim not to remain silent on the matter, as he had spoken out against Wanji's sedition conviction by the High Court while he was in the opposition. Zaid pointed out that Anwar had previously called the sentence harsh and said it was not consistent with the democratic transition. He said now, Anwar as the Prime Minister is in a position to redress the injustice done to Wanji. He added that the Attorney General in his capacity as the federal government and Prime Minister's chief legal advisor also sits as a member of the Slangor Pardons Board under Article 42, Bracket 5 and must advise to grant pardon in Wanji's case. He said allowing Wanji to remain in prison would be a black mark upon the country and its judiciary. Tiong King Singh has hit out at Sanusi over his statements. This was over Sanusi's response to him on claims he raised about restrictions on tourists in Langkawi. Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Tiong King Singh has chided Kedah Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Madnor for repeatedly issuing what he said were arrogant statements on issues that could tarnish Kedah's tourism industry. Tiong's remarks came after Sanusi reportedly invited him to visit Langkawi following his statements in the Dewan Rakyat last Tuesday, 
where he claimed that some government representatives had allegedly harassed tourists on dress codes and alcohol usage. Tiong had reportedly said that Sanusi, as the state Menteri Basar, has to explain the restrictions. However, Sanusi has denied Tiong's claims and was quoted by Free Malaysia today as saying that the Kedah government would not investigate the matter as the claims were unfounded. In response, Tiong stressed in a statement today that visiting each state to understand problems faced by the state's respective local tourism industry is his duty and obligation. He called on Sanusi to go to the ground and if the latter finds that such issues does exist, it shows that the problem has become a bigger and more serious matter. He said that all quarters must be responsible by paying attention and finding a solution instead of hastily denying or turning a blind eye when it comes to facing an existing problem. Tiong reiterated that he raised the issue solely to improve and find solutions to existing weaknesses involving the tourism industry nationwide. He said that the government cannot deny that some weaknesses exist, including abuse of power by certain quarters who try to take advantage for their personal interests. We are often faced with nutrient deficiency needed for our body. This is why I choose G-Sure. G-Sure is the first plant-based and complete nutrition drink that helps to improve the immune system and strengthen our bodies. It has to be Good Morning G-Sure. The Kuala Terengganu High Court has allowed an election petition from BN for the Kemaman seat, which nullified PN's victory. The EC will declare the seat vacant if PN does not file an appeal within 14 days. The election court has nullified PN candidate Che alias Hamid's victory for the Kemaman parliamentary seat. Kuala Terengganu High Court Judge Anselm Charles Fernandez allowed an election petition by one Muhammad Hisham Wan Abdul Jalil this afternoon. Che alias's counsel Yus Farizal Yusof confirmed with Malaysia Kini that the court allowed one Muhammad Hisham's petition. When asked whether PN would be appealing to the federal court to reinstate its electoral victory, he said they would be discussing the issue. In the event that PN does not file an appeal with the federal court in 14 days, the election commission will declare the parliamentary seat vacant, paving the way for a by-election. Meanwhile, one Muhammad Hisham's counsel also confirmed the court ruling today has voided PN's Kamaman electoral victory. Amin Uthman said that the judge had accepted the petitioner's claims in the election petition that there had been inducement at several official functions by the Terengganu state government via iBalia and iSiswa financial aid distributed to voters during the GE15 campaign period to secure votes for Che Alias. He added that the court has also ordered 30,000 ringgit costs to be paid by Che Alias to one Muhammad Hisham. During GE15, Che Alias rested Kamaman with around 27,000 votes majority, defeating BN candidate and former Terengganu Menteri Besar Ahmad Said, as well as Pakatan Harapan candidate Hasuni Sudin and Pajuang candidate Rosli Abdul Ghani. An Amana leader has denied claims that nominating Adli Zahari as a ministerial candidate is to fortify Mat Sabu's position in Amana ahead of the party polls. This was in response to claims by several sources to Malaysia Kini earlier today. The proposal to nominate Adli Zahari as a ministerial candidate from Amana could be to help Amana President Muhammad Sabu fortify his position when Amana goes to the polls this December. Sources told Malaysia Kini that Muhammad's position as the party's president is shaky and he could be challenged for the position in the polls. According to the sources, a lot of the grassroots are dissatisfied with Muhammad. They said this is why he is elevating Adli, who he is close with, to a ministerial position. The sources claim that Adli could be made deputy president if Mat Sabu manages to defend his position as president. A source who refused to be named claimed that choosing Adli to replace the late domestic trade and cost of living minister Salahuddin Ayyub in the cabinet is Mat Sabu's strategy to fortify his position ahead of the party polls. Adli is currently an Amana vice president and deputy defense minister. Previously, it was reported that Adli is expected to be appointed the domestic trade and cost of living minister to replace Salahuddin. Meanwhile, according to another source, Muhammad could face a challenge for the presidential post from Mujahid Yusuf Rawa, who is in an opposing camp within the party. 
Mujahid is also currently a vice president of the party, and he previously served as a minister in the prime minister's department. A source claimed that influential local NGO Pertubuhan Ikram Malaysia is the machinery behind Mujahid's move for the top post. Amana will have its party elections on December 23rd and 24th. According to the party's constitution, a person can only serve three consecutive terms as president. If Muhammad retains his position, this would be his final term to lead the party. Khairuddin has claimed that his former party past has strayed from their Islamic struggle. He cited remarks made by Sanusi recently and said that past no longer displays Islamic morality. Former PAS leader Khairuddin Aman Razali believes that PAS's Islamic struggle has strayed from its original cause. When met by Malaysia Kini during campaigning in Bentong last night, he said this is as the party idolizes leaders who utter rude remarks. Khairuddin cited the vulgar remark by Kedah Menteri Besar Mohd Sanusi Madnor during campaigning for the Pelangai by-election and said that it saddened him to see a senior party leader swearing and uttering vulgar words on the political stage and being greeted with applause and cheers from party members. He said that it is even worse that the Menteri Besar is a Muslim and we need peaceful politics, not one that is based on volatility and vulgarity. Elaborating, Khairuddin said PAS no longer displays Islamic morality as it celebrates leaders who utter immoral words. Khairuddin said that for him, PAS has strayed far from Islamic principles. He said Islam has a creed, laws, and morals and claimed that what is happening now has broken a lot of Islamic laws. Previously, Sanusi had urged Pelangai voters to reject Pakatan Harapan and BN as a sign of protest against the alleged liberalism of the federal government. Sanusi had used an example of a recent incident, where Ipoh Timor MP Howard Lee had allegedly used his own interpretation of a Quranic verse on TikTok. In slamming Lee over the matter, Sanusi said the latter was not even circumcised to talk about the Quran. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.